Good morning, everyone. We're going to pray that you are having a wonderful day and happy Mother's Day to you. We're going to ask you to stand to your feet. Good morning. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. There is no God like our God. No one can deliver like he can deliver. He is the Alpha. He is the Maker. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first. He is the last. And he's worthy to be magnified. And he's worthy to be adored. He is the great God of heaven and the God of earth. Come on and bless his name. There's nothing too difficult for him if you and I can believe in his name. The dead can be raised. The sick can be healed. The lost can be delivered. For great and mighty is the Lord. Come on, saints. Raise your hands and give glory to his name. Amen, amen. Give glory to God. Give glory. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Glory to God. 
Good morning. The scripture reading this morning is Psalm number 24, verses 1 through 6. Psalm 24, 1 through 6. The earth is the Lord's and all the fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully? He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name today, Lord. This is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the rain, Lord. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for health. Lord, we thank you for giving us a mind to come into your house on this day, worship and praise your holy name. We pray, Lord, that our praise today will be acceptable in your sight. Lord, we ask now that you would bless this assembly, Lord. We ask you to bless each person present. Grant, them, grant us the blessings that we stand in need of on today, Lord. And Lord, we pray for the man of God who delivered the word on today. We pray, dear Master, that your word would go forth with power, that it would minister to every need, dear Master, that it would heal every sickness, dear Master, and that it would cause us, dear Master, to glorify your name all the more. Lord, these are the blessings we ask in the precious and strong name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. We give God all the praise and all the honor, and we know that we can do absolutely nothing on our own. We're going to ask that you sing the congregational song, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. The verse goes like this. Time is filled with swift transition. Change in the 
of darkness his name is Jesus he keeps his promise every time he keeps his promises every single time if he's promised you something guess what he's gonna keep his promises he is God he is he is God and we've come to worship him We've come to worship him today. We've come to worship the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. His name is Jesus. And we've come today to worship the almighty God, he is God all by himself. He is, he is God. There is none like our God. He is, he is God all by himself. 
Let me call your attention to the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. The book is Psalms. The number is Psalm 139. Psalm number 139. In the Old Testament, the book is Psalms. The scripture is coming from Psalm number 139. I'll be reading for you verses 13 and 14. Psalm 139 verses 13 and 14. Reading from the New King James Version, it says, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. I want to talk about God works through motherhood. God works through motherhood. When we're looking to see where God is at work, we're also looking to see where we can join him where he's already working. I stopped by today on my way to the rapture to let you know that God even works through motherhood. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the room. Whether you are a surrogate, whether you are a birth mom, whether you have adopted somebody else's child, today we stop for a moment to honor you. Next to Christmas and Easter, uh, motherhood is right at the top. Because most people know and understand that mothers have paid and are paying a great cost, even for their adult children. Mothers make sacrifices that men just don't make. Mothers see things, they feel things, they are unctioned by things that men just can't see, feel, and are not unctioned by. Women have this 18th sense where they can know when their children are sad. They can be miles and miles away. And they know when their children need them. God has placed something in mothers that none of us can identify. Simply because we are not mothers. Sometimes men are single parents and they have the audacity to say, I'm your daddy and your mama. Men, you will never, ever, ever be a mama. You can do things that women do, but you're not a mother. You can do things that are beyond your scope or your duty, but you'll never be a mother. I remember the days of being a single parent, how I used to spend two hours on Sunday morning. Literally, from start to finish, combing hair for two hours. Women in this room asking me, what were you doing? Did you stop and take a break? Did you? Literally for two hours, I would slap the jail on. 
I would start combing at the tip and work my way toward the scalp, and then I would take a, take a long pull all the way to, did I do it right? And then I would take a ponytail and set it here, a ponytail and set it there, and one in the back to kind of pull it all together, and I would curl a bang and roll it down the front of my daughter's face. Boy, I thought I was really doing something. I would arrive at the Holman Street Church, and I looked like a single dad. I dressed my child like I didn't have a woman's touch. And I had spent two whole hours in Kalisha Matthews would walk up to my daughter and have the nerve, the audacity, to say, girl, come on in this restroom. Your daddy didn't know what he was doing. I had to tell her every Sunday, baby, I just spent two hours doing this. I can do what I did today in my sleep. I've just gotten good at this. And she would look at me and grab my child, walk in the restroom, come back out in 10 minutes, and she would look totally different. And I had spent two hours getting myself ready, getting her hair ready, putting, making sure her dress was on right. And I would look at her and say, baby, you look good. And the women of the church would grab my child and they would, uh, and they would abduct my child take her and do something, mess up my style, because I had my own style. And they would bring this child looking so much different than what I had put together. Now here I am 30 years later, and I finally realized that I could only be a good daddy, but I could not be a mother. I, I, could, I couldn't feel what she was feeling. I, I couldn't react the way a mother ought to react. I couldn't carry myself the way a mother would carry herself. All I can do, brothers, is just be the best dad I could possibly be. It takes a mother's touch. Whether it's a male or female, it takes a mother's touch to prove that God is using you in motherhood. I don't see how, I don't see how, I don't see how they do it. I'm, I mean, they can carry three backpacks, but when the man's around, they can't carry one. When, when the man around, you got to move that chair here, move that chair there. But when the child shows up, and the child does just one thing or make one noise, let me tell you, the mother gets busy and she become like Hercules to make sure that child has what he or she needs. In the text, the Bible, in Psalm 30, 139, the Bible says in verses 13 and 14, God formed us in our inward parts. God has put us together just like we are. Regardless of what you look like, regardless of what you sound like, some folk don't even like to hear their own voices. But God has put you together. Some people may not like their wide nose or their skinny nose, but God has put you together. Some people act out because they're only four foot 11 or, or they're only five foot two, but God knew what he was doing when he made you. The text declares God formed you inside and God formed you outside. You might as well get used to who you are. You might as well be sat satisfied with who you are. Your esteem ought to go up in the fact that God has formed you. He has shaped you. He has made you who you are even before your birth. And look at the text. The text declares, while you were at, yet in your mother's womb, God shaped you. 
while you were in the embryo shape, God formed you. While you were just formulating 23 chromosomes from daddy and 23 chromosomes from mama, God shaped you and put you together in who you are. Whether your cheeks are sunk in or whether you got big, round, rosy cheeks, God has formed you. He has made you who you are, just like you are. Your color, your skin tone, your cheeks, your teeth, God has put them together. And we ought to thank God for what God has already done. Your forehead sticking out like it is, your forehead back on your, in your hair is receding. God knew what you're going to look like. We put too much into what we look like on the outside when God is concerned about what you look like on the inside. We put so much into it. I mean, we have makeup. We have shoes. We have clothes. I told you a few weeks ago that in our trip to Belize, they didn't have shoes, they didn't have makeup, but when you went inside the store, they had hair systems. I think everywhere on the planet, there is a store with some hair in it. The women didn't have pedicures and manicures, but they had hair. They didn't have shoes to wear. We would take off our shoes, even our work boots, and donate it to them, and they would not wear them because they've been living all their lives without shoes, and they would not go to work with shoes on, but they had hair. They had synthetic hair. They had fake human hair, and they had human hair. It's because we are so concerned with what we look like on the outside until we've forgotten what we ought to look like on the inside. I oftentimes say to young brothers, don't worry about, don't put too much stock in what she look like on the outside. She can be pretty on the outside and a booger bear on the inside. <laughs> you just don't raise your hand. <laughs> I'm good. So she can walk with a strut that just amaze you, but you need to be concerned about what God has placed on the inside. The text declares that God formed you, your inner parts, your innermost being, he formed it while you were in your mother's womb. And we, we want mothers to go all the way for us, don't we? And mothers have gone, even if you have an adopted mother, she has gone all the way for you. They, they give to you when they don't have. They work two jobs, three jobs, some of them work four jobs, just so you can dress like the other children. Mothers make sure that your stuff is done and their stuff is raggedy. It's the hands of the mother that, that teaches a child how to read. It's, it's the voice of the mother that, that forms them while they're on the inside. It's the hands of the mother that teaches them how to write. It's the hands of the mother that put up with folk when they don't like her. Mothers in the 20th century, they would go to work and they would scrub floors on their knees and they would be tired when they got home, but they would make for sure that every child had something to eat. They would make sure that every child had a place to lay their head. They would make sure that every child had school money and they went on field trips and you don't realize what mothers had to go through just so you can go on that trip just so you can have something that, that everybody else has. Just so you can get out of those Converse shoes so you can wear Jordans. Mothers take stuff from men that they shouldn't have to put up with just for their children. 
Some people stay attached because I got to make sure my children have a way. And they want to make sure that my children don't have to go through what I had to go through. It's because God is working through motherhood. God shaped us. He formed us. He made us, placed us in the mother's womb. And guess what? Mama had to sacrifice even while you were in the womb. She had to stop drinking. Don't testify with me this morning. Just, just care. T today is all right to be quiet. <laughs> don't, don't blow your cover. Mama had to stop drinking. Mama had to stop partying. Mama had to stop certain exercises. And she could not reach over her head at certain times. And even if she tried to reach over her head, she couldn't reach it anymore. She couldn't run like she used to. Her ankles were, was once this size and now it's this size. Her midriff began to, to inflate. She had to run to the restroom every two, three minutes. If she got on the airplane, she would always ask for the last seat, the one right next to the stinking restroom so they could get to the restroom real fast. Her posture began to change where she used to stand up like this. Now she got to stand back like this because she didn't want to tumble over and hurt her baby. Mothers have taken great sacrifices just so we can be here, and then we get to get to and call ourselves disrespecting them. Mothers have made great sacrifices, so much so, until if you're going to ever disrespect anything or anybody, it ought not be mama. I don't care how you got here, whether you got a daddy on the scene or not. Everybody got a daddy, whether he's on the scene or not. Don't use that as an excuse. And once you tower over your mother, once you outgrow her, you begin to respect her more and more and more. I remember my mama was 98 pounds. And at 13, 14 years old, we were already looking at the top of her head. One of my brothers, I won't tell you which one, decided that he wasn't going to cry while she was whipping him. Let me tell you, when the 20th century mama got on you, you couldn't do anything right. She whipped you for 20 minutes, and then she says, dry it up, shut up, before I give you something to cry about. And I'm standing there wondering, what has happened for the last 20 minutes? <laughs> then one of my brothers decided, I'm not going to cry, because I ain't going to let her tell me to dry it up. Then she says, so you ain't going to cry, huh? <laughs> so you bad. <laughs> so you, 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 since you're standing over me, so you, think you, you, so you ain't going to cry, huh? And the moment he started crying, shut up, before you give you something to cry about. And it's all because mothers make sacrifices that no one else will make. Even today, with the storm outside, people are traveling to spend time with mama. Early in the morning, as soon as their eyes open, People are looking for the phone to call their mother. On my birthday every year, I call. I used to be mom and daddy. Daddy has gone on. So I used to call mom and daddy and say, look, thank you for not aborting me. On my birthday, I called them and said, thank you for allowing me to live. Because some of the people that were going to be born in the same year, the same month, and on the same day you were going to be born, they got aborted. But we ought to thank the one who stood for us even when the doctor says, this is not going to be a normal baby. And mamas would say, well, I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to trust God. Even when teenagers get pregnant out of wedlock and the guy gone do his thing, the mama's still hanging around. It's because God is working through motherhood. He says, 
for God formed me, my inward parts, and he covered me in my mother's womb. As you were in the womb, you didn't have the big head you got now. You didn't have the skull that you have now. You didn't have the outer protection that you have now. So mama had to make sure you were protected, and God created a system by which you can be protected in the womb of your mama. Those of us who still have mamas alive, we are blessed beyond measure. We are blessed and we are so blessed. It is an awesome thing to have your mama around. Just a few minutes ago, Pastor McClinton was telling me, and I, I'm sure I got the, the numbers wrong, but, but you'll get the gist. He says, my 98-year-old aunt left and went out of town to celebrate her 90 seven-year-old sister's birthday and my 93-year-old mama couldn't go because she had to stay at home and take care of my 95-year-old daddy. You didn't get that, did you? In other words, even at 95, even at 97, even at 98, women are making sacrifices that men just won't make. They, they got a mother, the children. <laughs> and some, sometimes when you marry some people, you got a mother, the man. <laughs> I, I know men don't want you to tell them what to do. I, I know men don't want you to mother them. Don't, don't even look at the corner of your eyes. I, I know that men want to think that they really got it going on, but looking at it, look at it like this, brother. God wants you to have a help me. And let me tell you, Brother Irvin, I'm using my help me to every chance I get. We have to get to a point in our lives where we appreciate women so much until we honor them regardless of who they are. We honor, we have to give them honor. We have to give them honor in such a way that we make sure that we give them honor regardless of whether they've been good mothers or not. I know some of them have, have not done what they, and I don't want this to be a Krispy Kreme message. I know some of them have not done for you what they ought to have done for you, but God has created a system around you to make you who you are and do what he has done. Motherhood, regardless of this is biological or not, God works through it. God works through it. And when God works through motherhood, he paints a picture of how much he loves us. It says we were in our mother's womb, and it says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, because motherhood took care of the natural process, I have to praise God because God set up the process. Motherhood, it, so many women have lost babies. So many, so many women can't have babies. But the fact of the matter is God has put a system in place for you to still be here. And if you're not blessed now, go back and bless the woman that took care of you. Brother Miles, will you walk outside, please? Go in and, and check on the woman who took care of you. Go and... And minister to the woman who took care of you. Go and look for the woman. And we good. Go and look for the woman. Go and look for the woman who spared your life. Look for the woman and appreciate her. I don't care if she has whipped you. I don't care if she has cursed you. Give her honor because she is. Mama, give her honor. He says, he says, I will praise you, God. I will praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm, I'm going to praise the one who has made me. 
And no, you didn't choose the mama you got. And you ought to thank God for it. But the one you have is the one God wanted you to have. The one, it doesn't matter where you were born, what relationship you were to the other people. It, you need to make sure that you give this woman honor because she went through some stuff for you. I'm telling you, she went through some stuff. And, and life has not told the whole story yet. Life has not turned over to you everything that she, you will never imagine what they've gone through. You can't even think of it. You can't even dream of it. And if you're a 21st century child, you sure don't know what they've gone through for you. And because God put the process in place, you got to understand that you are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are put together. God has knitted everything about you. He has knitted it together. You are special in God's sight. You are different from anybody else. Even if you are a twin or triplet, you are different from anybody else. No one who is present or not present are what you are today. You're beautiful. We have to tell our children they're beautiful. We have to tell our children that they are special. We have to tell our children that, that they are wonderfully made by the hands of God. I learned, I learned a few years ago you have to watch your language because language changes. I told a little boy, man, man, you are special. He said, wait a minute, why you call me special? Don't be calling me special. Now I got I to gotta catch up with the lingo. I got to make sure that, that I keep in touch with today's standard of conversation. But they are special. They are fearfully, they're wonderfully made. And then the psalmist says, marvelous are God's works. God has put you together. God has made you. And he has dealt you a hand that is so marvelous. It is amazing. You, you are different. You, it's amazing what God has done for you. You're not a rat. You're not a snake. You're not a bear. You are a human being. Psalm number eight, the psalmist began to ask the question to God, who is man that you are mindful of him? That you have made him just a little lower than the angels. That you rescue him when he's in trouble. Who is man that you even think about man? You are man, you are woman, you are child. God has placed his hands on you and he's made you marvelously. Regardless, regardless of what you don't have, God has marvelously made you. And he says, this my soul knows right well. He says, this my soul knows right well. My soul, my soul knows right well. In other words, I'm going to celebrate God because he took care of mama and then he took care of me in the midst of mama. So let me just, let me just give you some scripture to support my, my, my argument here. Psalm 127 and 3. Children are a heritage from God. The fruit of the wound is a reward from God. Children are a heritage from God. The fruit of the wound is a reward from God. It doesn't matter how they act, and I know sometimes they don't act like they're a reward. I know sometimes they act like they're cursed. I know sometimes they act like they just fell off the wrong turnip truck. But the Bible says that they are rewards. They are a heritage from the Lord. Children are blessings. Children are blessings. Children are, I want you to hear this, children are blessings. Children are blessings. Doesn't matter if they wear their pants around their knees or not, children are blessings. Doesn't matter if they can play sports or not, children are blessings. 
It doesn't matter if they act like it or not. Children are blessings. And you are blessed to have them in your presence. When you look at intergenerational systems, children keep seniors young. Let me tell you, the, the mama in here tell you, <laughs> I ain't run like this ever before in my life. Mama becomes the taxi cab. Mama becomes Uber and don't get and doesn't get paid. Mama become Lyft and don't get a dime. And if they do one thing for you, they want to get paid. So we have to understand that children are blessings. Proverbs 22 and 6, if we train up a child in the way he should go or the way she should go, they would not depart. The original text means that they will return to what you have taught them. They will return to what you have trained them. That's why it's important for us to put Jesus in these children. We, 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 I don't care if we're playing music. I don't care, I don't care if we're we, we doing dominoes. I don't care if we're doing robotics. I don't care if we're doing drama and theatrics. We need to put Jesus into these children because if they're going to walk with God, when they get in trouble, they need to know Jesus. And many times they can't get Jesus on the internet. Matter of fact, sometimes the internet fights against them and Jesus. That's why a Hebrew writer says it like this. He says, bring them to church. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25, say you ought to bring your children to church. You know, sometimes I do funerals and I'm like, what can I say other than Jesus died and rose again? Boy, I call me, Pastor, can I get you to write me a recommendation? What am I going to tell him? I haven't seen him. Literally hadn't seen them in 19 years. What am I going to tell them? The answer, Brother Johnson, is just lie for me. When, when, when a family calls you to, 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 and you haven't seen them, my eulogy is real short. The eulogy is, the eulogy is, is, is when you speak well of somebody. My eulogy is short, but my sermon is long. The reason why the eulogy is short, all I can do is say, this brother lives. And now let's talk about Jesus. When we let our children get caught up in all this other stuff and don't give them Jesus, we're going to hate it when we get old. I'm telling you, we're going to hate it. Now let me just share with you, the environment has a lot to do with these children. The environment has a lot to do with shaping them and molding them. But Jesus ought to start at the house. Jesus, you have to push Jesus. You, people say, I don't want to push, they say religion. I don't want to push Jesus on my children. Well, you're pushing everything else on them. The, the mother who trains them, the mother who looks out for them, the mother who, uh, who is a blessing to the Lord. Proverbs 22 and 6 declares that children gives us hope. Young folk. Every church needs a young person or some young people to make sure the church leave, lose, lives on. I'm telling you now, I guarantee you, I have more days behind me than I have in front of me. There's no doubt about it. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I have more days behind I gotta lead this church when I'm gone. Some young man has to be groomed today to lead this church because if we don't let them lead today, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have another church of Beyonce. 
where women worship Beyonce in her music. Where women says that, that women of color need to know who they are to build up their self-esteem. So Beyonce's records and music give these women self-esteem. Let me tell you, without Jesus, you have no esteem. Without Jesus, you're depressed. Without Jesus and without walking with him, you will never be motivated to move forward. It takes Jesus to bless children. The devil, the devil is running rapid. The devil is, is, is having a field day if we don't train our children in the Lord. The Bible says that if we train them in the Lord, they walk away, they will return. Because we are praying for them. We are praying prayers like, Lord, turn them around, turn them around. Lord, touch their heart, lead them in the right way. And some of us are even praying the prayer, Lord, at anything it take, shut them down. Let them have it. Proverbs 23 and 25, children bring joy. Children bring joy. Children, matter of fact, the text declares that if the child brings rejoicing to the whole household. And when there's rejoicing, that means there's joy once, joy twice, there is rejoicing. Proverbs 31, 28 through 31, it says that this woman who is a mother is to be praised. Proverbs 31, 28 through 31. This woman is to be praised. She is to be honored. She is one that you ought to praise. You ought to thank her. You ought not lift her like you lift God, but you ought to thank her for what she has done. This woman is to be praised. Let me tell you, you ought, you ought to... Make a call today, visit today. You ought to make sure whatever you do, you thank that woman. She is to be praised. My final thing, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. The mothers are to be honored and respected. Let me tell you, mothers have to be honored and respected. Regardless of what goes on, regardless of what she turns out to be, mothers ought to be honored and respected. I know, I know they weren't there the whole time, but they're to be honored and respected. When you look at the car Rolls Royce, how many of you know what a Rolls Royce is? A Rolls Royce. Anybody know what a Rolls Royce is? Gilbert, you have one at your house? A Rolls Royce. You know what? A, a Rolls Royce is a special kind of car. The Rolls Royce is one of the leading manufacturers in the world. But not, a many, not many people have one. The Rolls Royce is a leading manufacturer. The Rolls Royce is located and have customers in over 150 countries. But we don't see one riding around, but every now and then. When you walk in the Rolls Royce uh, showroom, you don't walk in and say, how much this one costs like you do at Ford. When you go to Chrysler, you say, how much you want for this one? When you go to GMC and when you buy, buy a, a Chevrolet, you, you want to know how much is this one fully loaded. But when you walk in the Rolls Royce showroom floor, when you walk on the floor, you don't ask what the price is. Because when you ask the salesman what the price, the answer is the same regardless of which salesman you ask. How much is this Rolls Royce? You walk in, inflated like you got something going on for yourself. The moment you ask the question, how much is this Rolls Royce? The answer is, you can't afford it. Well, how you know I can't afford it? Because you ask how much it costs. Because when you go get a Rolls Royce, you don't afford it before you walk in the room. Now, you can go there sightseeing. You can go there praying. You can go there laying hands on it. You can go there naming it and claim it, but you won't walk out of there with it. <laughs> you see, Ford, Chrysler, Chevrolet, Lexus, 
all of them will build your credit up for you and let you have it when you can't afford it. But when you walk in Rolls Royce, you don't ask the question how much it is. You, you, don't, you don't ask questions at all. You walk in and you say, I want this one in this color. And I want the interior to be chocolate. Or I want the interior to be black. This is the one I want. Because Rolls Royce is a leading manufacturer in the world. Rolls Royce has a strong brand and a strong image. It is recognized all over the world. People love the ride of the Rolls Royce. You can ride over bumps and don't feel it. You don't have to slow down. It make proper adjustments at the same time you're hitting the bump. When you ride in a Rolls Royce, you don't, you don't say, man, slow down. I, you, you hurt me back here. You do that in Chevrolet and Lexus. But in Rolls Royce, the ride is so smooth. The engine, the, the chassis, the exterior has great quality that you would never imagine. Talking about the Rolls Royce. It is elegant. It is, it is superior to all. The Rolls Royce is the car of the century. It has a symbol, and the symbol rep represents that you're rich. I'm not talking about $250,000 a year. If you make that, that's good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Rolls Royce indicate that the person who walks in the showroom, the person who drives away in the car, that person is rich. Finally, the, the Rolls Royce has great technological and it has great customer support. You call Rolls Royce, you don't get push one for this, push five for this, and then when you get to that one, it says push this for this and this for that. I stopped by to tell you that mothers are just Rolls Royce. They are Rolls Royce because they make great sacrifice. They are Rolls Royce because they've been built for it. They are Rolls Royce because they, they, make, they make their joy come out when they do something for their child. Every time one of them go to prison, I, I want to call somebody to take me down there to see my baby. Now, he's 45 years old. He's been in prison six times, but I got to go down there and see my baby. After a while, Daddy said he went down there the first time on his own. I went and got him. He went down there the second time. That must be where his address is. Let him live there. The mothers are so forgiving, so compassionate. So loving. And I want to tell you the reason why mothers are so faithful. As you look at the text in and, and, and verses 13 and 14 of Psalm 139. As you look at the text, the reason why mothers are so faithful is because God is faithful. I'm telling you the reason why mothers are so faithful is because God is faithful. I'm not talking about Christian mothers. I'm just talking about mothers. God is so faithful. He keeps his promise. He is the way maker. He's the one who keeps us in the middle of our stuff. God is faithful. He's so faithful that he gave his very best just like women give their very best just like mothers give their very best. He is faithful. God gives us his very best. He has made a way out of no way. He has done it for you. He gave his son for you on Calvary. That you can praise her. That you can honor her. That you can respect her. Jesus died on Calvary for you and for me. Mean men killed him. Mean men killed Jesus on Calvary. He died on the cross that day. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb for you and for me because early that third day morning he got up with all power. God works well even through motherhood. The same Jesus that got up with all power, he's available to you today. Amen. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. 
You ought to try Jesus. You've tried him, he let you down. You've tried her, she gone on about her business. You tried them, and they left you high and dry. Some of us have even tried it. I recommend Jesus. He is the righteous lamb of God who gave his life for you and for me. He died on Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you've never received Jesus as your personal savior, this is your moment, this is your opportunity. Would you bow your head with me and invite him into your life, believe in this simple story. And just repeat these simple words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, trust in Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection, we believe, we believe that God has, has reserved a place for you. We believe that you're saved. And, and once you're saved, you're always saved. And one of these days when we get to heaven, we're going to rejoice with Jesus, the one who gave his life for us on Calvary. Hallelujah to the Lamb. When we thank God for who he is and what he's done. Come unto Jesus. If you need a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. Here at 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus is the center of attention. Where Jesus the Christ reigns and rules. He will. Care of you. Come on, come on to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Wow. Wow. Wow, you have time. time. Amen. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Uh, Jonathan, they're going to bring the envelope to you. Jonathan, they're going to bring the envelope to you. Come on, come on back up. It is offering time. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand, and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way in the air, and you will be served. If you want to give by way of electronics means, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he draws all men unto us, unto himself. If you want to mail in your offering, you, you can mail it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Uh, we need, Jonathan needs an envelope up here. Amen. He may need to, you never know. He worked hard this week. So he may need two envelopes, amen. Father God, we thank you for these givers. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for income increase. We thank you for jobs. We thank you, Father God, for money. We ask you to bless us as we come to give unto you. 
Bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. this side to stand, follow first impressions from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. First impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. you for these gifts and these givers in Jesus name amen Ariana Carrier will you stand please Ariana Carrier this is Ariana Carrier she's being recognized for the national recognition of College board, amen. 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 Thank God for young people. When young people do it, I think I can do it. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a group of young people that are doing great things in our ministry, and I'm just so glad about it. And um, I want to just thank God for them. Before we before we move to to the our next place in our program. Uh, today, this week rather, is uh, Teachers Recognition Week, and uh, we want to recognize the teachers at the New Beginning Church. If you are a Sunday school student or a Bible study student, and sometime even on Sunday morning worship service, these people make a difference in your life. And so I want to recognize them by giving them a gift. And uh, as you can see, my gift is in a, a tithing envelope. Uh, you'll get that one after a while. You get that. All of my gifts are given out in a tithing envelope and it already have their names on it. Amen. And their names are right there where it says names. It got their names on their tithing envelope. And as I give them their gift, they appreciate 
uh, what uh, teachers do. It is teachers that make all ministry and teachers make all occupations take place. Amen. So we want to always recognize our, our teachers. The first one is Brother Kevin Whitlock. Brother Kevin Whitlock, our, our, adult, our adult Sunday school instructor. Next one is Sister Carolyn Davis, our youth Sunday school instructor. Our adult Sunday school instructor, Brother Euro C. Miles Jr. instructor is uh, Sister Rebecca Hopper, and she will get hers next week. Our, our Latino Sunday school class, Sister Ruby Poss. Latino Sunday School instructor, Brother Sergio Melo. Come on down. message I probably should have. There's a poem out there that called uh, Old School Mama. Called Old School Mama. I'm going to give it to Jonathan's mama. <laughs> Jonathan. Poem, old School Mama. Amen. How many of y'all had Old School Mama? Old School Mama. Come on, Hazel. <laughs> calendars for next Sunday, May 19th. The youth will be entrepreneurs for a day. Purchase lemonade and other food items immediately after the morning, the morning worship service for $5. Calling all youth. The New Beginning Church will have a youth athletic day, May 25th, 9 to 1 p.m. Lunch is available for $5. We will have football, basketball, volleyball, board games, and dunk the pastor and more. I can't wait for that one. <laughs> Upcoming events. Music classes at NBC. Music classes are offered on Friday nights from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. and on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock a.m. Please see Sister Carolyn Davis for more information. Bible listening and journaling for 2024. We are listening to the New Testament and studying our weekly Sunday school lesson. Tomorrow we start week 20, act 7. Please continue to listen and study God's word. Domestic mission trip. Turning Hearts Music Ensemble and the NBC youth will be traveling on a domestic mission trip from Texas to Mississippi and Tennessee on June 6th through 10th, 2024. Your complete balance for the mission trip is due by Wednesday, May 22nd. Please mail payments and donations to turningheartsme at gmail.com. Please remember those on our prayer list. Tommy Hemingway Jr., Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Paula Hornsby, 
Terry Lewis, Doris Bridgeforth, Brandon Turner, Herman Guillory, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Kenneth Bell, Beverly Wallace, Aria Carey Spencer, Mallory Williams, Vivian Aswaha, Ed Brandon and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alford Jr., Al Brinson, Sarante Miller, Labors for the Harvest, and World Peace. Thank you. Amen. When you, thank you, Hazel. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless you. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your compassion toward us. Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father. Bless our lives and bless those who we're praying for. We ask you to minister to them. Lord, give them confidence. Give them strength. Give them hope in you. Lord, we ask you to deliver as only you can. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with us and stand by us. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to encourage every person. Bless those who are about to give up, that they will stand firm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. As you're about to leave, I want to ask you to leave through this, this side door here and or the glass door. Um, another sermon for another time would be when you get in church and you can't get out. As I stood here, I, I asked Brother Miles to go back there because I saw children in and out. We don't want children in and out of the church by themselves. So I asked Brother Miles to go back there. And then Brother Malo went back there and outside. So we want to make sure that every child is accompanied by an adult when they go in and outside. Amen. And in the midst of that going on, in the midst of my sermon, the door locked and went open. So there was a young man who was looking, obviously, for the new home church down the street. Because when you put the new home church in Google Maps, it sends you to New Beginning Church. And so there was a young man sitting in here for, that wanted to go to the new home church. And I wasn't going to say anything. Just let the door lock. And so the door locked, and he had to go out the side door. And so I want to say to you, oh, it's going to Pastor McLean's church. So we have to understand that in the midst of what's going on, in the midst of service, let's, let's don't move so much because we're distracting to others. So whatever you do, as the less you move, the better it is because I'm very much aware of the danger in church. And so because I am ultra sensitive to the dangers in church, when you move, it becomes not only distracting to the people around you, but it's distracting to me. And and I'm trying to make sure I negotiate things well while I'm standing up here because I want to make sure that everybody in this room is safe. And so as, as you move, make sure you got to move, have to move. If you don't have to move, just remain still for that, that, that hour and 30 minutes. Amen? So just remain still. If you know you got some things that you have to do, sit near the restroom and come on back in. That way you'll be behind other people and won't be as distracting because when you move, I'm trying to figure out, are we in danger or are you moving because we have to move? So if you would, please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure you move only when you have to. And then make sure that you take care of some stuff before we come to church because we are here to give honor to God. And for those of you who get here after 1030, come on in right around 1040, 10, 10, 1025 and and that way it won't be distracting. Amen? Thank you so much. Thank you for your kindness, your love toward God. Because we're doing this for God, right? And we want to do, do this for the excellent, excellent God. And if you know you got a train that comes on the track at 10 o'clock, leave a little early so you can beat the train there. Amen? If you know the forecast is bad, leave a little early so you won't risk your life to get here. But come on to church and let's, let's celebrate God together. Amen? There are some people in our audience that are not normally here. They are our visitors. We want to recognize you. If you're visiting with us today, please stand, introduce yourself, and so we can see who you are and say hello to you. And also, you will, as you stand, you will be given a, um, a, um, a visitor's card. Please take that visitor's card, fill it out, and give it to me before you, you leave today. If you're visiting, please stand. Amen. 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 So who's the spokesperson for this couple? Who's the spokesperson? All right, sir, you it. You it. Mm -hmm. 
What's her name? Tabitha. Okay. Hey, okay. Sister Lulu, I mean Lula Richard. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Please fill out the visitor's card. I want to give you a call, see what your experience was like as you visit with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Richard, for, for inviting your guests. Anyone else? Anyone else is visiting and don't want to stand? Stand anyway, please. If you're visiting with us, if if your ties hadn't come here last month, stand. <laughs> Amen. Who's the spokesperson for this couple here? Amen. Say something to us. Amen. Thank you so much. Who is your mama? All right. Thank you, Sister Irvin. Thank you for thank you all for coming. Please fill out a business card. Want to get to get to know you a little better. Amen. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? anybody else. Thank you to our visitors for visiting with us. We're just so glad that you've come today to be a part of our service. What's next, Kevin? Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Today is Mother's Day, so we want to recognize those of you who are mothers, regardless of how you got to be a mother. Will you stand if you are a mother? And I'm going to turn it over to somebody. I don't know who am I turning it over to. Sister Woods, she says, she says, Sister Woods, I'm turning over to. Amen. If you are a mother, please stand. We're going to ask the children to come up with your cards. Children are coming, children are coming. Come on, y'all. The, the, the seniors move faster than y'all move. Come on here. Come on, come on down here. While, while the children are coming, I'm going to read this poem to the mothers. Happy Mother Days to all, including myself. I am a great grandmother. It says, a great mom is just the right blend of strength, honor, and love. A great mom knows when to step back, step in, or simply let a hug do the talking. A great mom is there to celebrate the good times and the comfort during the hard times. A great mom isn't about being perfect. She's about being sincere and honest and real. Today, we celebrate the great mom. How wonderful you are, and to let you know you are being a lot happy we are a lot happy with you in this world happy mother's day amen first of all the mothers who are standing we want to make sure we give them gifts will you just come this way and i give it to you come on this way all the mothers in the room i have one other thing in your package it's this little thing right here this is not candy so if you go into the bathroom and run it in some water, it is a tower. So these little things in your bag is a tower, okay? Amen. Who's coming? Who's coming? Amen. Thank you so much. Give me a hug, girl. Amen. Come on. Come on up here. Okay, and they all have scriptures on them. Mm -hmm. 
now our children are coming. Our children are coming. Jonathan's mama to come. This is a surprise, he said. Gracias por cuidarme. Gracias por la comida. Te amo por todo lo que me has ayudado. Te amo y como tú me cuidas, yo te cuidaré. Jonathan. Amén. We thank her for food. <laughs> okay, thank you. Come on, huh? his mom to come. All three of you. Gracias por cuidarme y por amarnos todo el tiempo. Gracias por ser una madre que nos ayuda a ser unas mejores personas. Gracias por apoyarme cualquier tiempo. Gracias por ser un, una, um, un buen, una buena madre. Sin usted yo podría ir aún más camino. Gracias por todo, todo lo que ha hecho usted para, noso para todos nosotros. mejor madre que un, un hijo podría uh, pedir gracias por enseñarnos cómo sirve la vida cómo sirve la vida gracias por enseñarnos el bien y lo mal y por imitarnos a Dios y Jesús gracias por ser una madre que nos disciplina para que para que nos enseñes no seguir lo malo gracias por todo Hola querida madre, solo te quiero felicitar en este día especial y te quería agradecerte por algunas cosas. Uno, gracias por cuidarme cuando estoy mala, uh, gracias por estar detrás de mí en la escuela, gracias por la comida, la sobrosa comida que me das todos los días, gracias por la ropa que me compras, gracias por ser la primera en estar ahí cuando estoy en problemas, gracias por disciplinarme. Las cosas que has pasado para llegar aquí es algo increíble. Tú eres una de las mujeres más fuertes que he visto. Gracias por no rendirte conmigo. Te amo mucho, mucho, mucho. Gracias por todo. Y ya. Amen. Come on, Alaina. Alaina, come on. Come on, Alaina. Lead the knuckleheads over there. You come first. Come on. Uh, Alaina's grandmother is coming. Oh, okay. Go ahead, come read it for us. Come on, children. All three children. Sister God's are coming. Uncle for they cook, give me food, and give me money for school. I'll, I'll always love you no matter what. I love you, Mom. Mom. Mom, I appreciate everything that you have done and the sacrifices you have done for me to become who I am today. Also, you did a great job for me 
for raising me and my two brothers right. Love you so much. Gracias por todo el dinero que has gastado en mí y por todo lo que has hecho por mí. Te quiero mucho. Feliz Día de la Madre. Amen. Amen. One more thank God for mothers. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to have a cry day on Mother's Day, amen. Um, it's good to have, have children of to great sacrifice for them, amen. Amen. Uh, what's next? What's next? What's next? Pastor Davis, I want to get a picture, an individual picture of the mothers. We were supposed to do it right outside that door. So when y'all go out, we're going to all go back around there. I want to get a picture of all the mothers individually. Thank you. So that's every mother, even if your child is not here, okay? So make sure you get a picture uh, before we leave. Kevin, what's next? Oh, that's next. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Why don't we stand to, to be dismissed? Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. trying to own, try, try to earn his dollar today. He's trying, he's, trying, he's trying to earn his dollar today. Amen. Father God, we thank you now. We love you. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you, God, for who you are, for what you do. We thank you for mothers. We thank you for life. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us this day that we will go and tell others how we appreciate them. Bless our lives, Father God, and bless our lives to always represent you well. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. Our mission and vision, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32, you are dismissed. We all are going this way, we're going this way. And I'm going